Good morning, Team Dominator members. This is a live emergency update on tropical troubles that are happening, but also the threat of severe weather, a double-barreled threat of severe weather during early November. Looks like we're going to have a pattern change that is going to be imminent up there, and that pattern change is going to bring big-time troughs to the western U.S., big-time low-level jets across the southern plains, and it's that low-level wind, the low-level jet, that leads to uh, the formation of tornadoes from supercell storms. It's so important. But first, we are going to be talking about that Central American gyre pattern in the Western Caribbean. A couple of days ago, the GFS was showing a, a strong hurricane coming into the Eastern Gulf of Mexico once again. I don't think uh, that is going to happen, of course. Very unlikely scenario, but it is a possibility, of course. And uh, I do think that it is going to be trending just a little bit further east. But we're going to talk exactly about the steering mechanisms that are in play. Down here is the Western Caribbean. And those are all different areas of low pressure that are, are trying to cluster around that zone just to the east of Nicaragua. That is your Central American gyre, basically. Your area of spin down there that forms near Central America. A westerly wind surge will come in and slam into these northeasterly trade winds, and that can create a gyre, an area of spin down here. And you can see that each of these individual members, some of them intensify a little faster, some a little bit later, and also a lot of the models are developing an area of spin here just to the south of Jamaica. They seem to develop two areas of spin into early November, and I was getting a little bit worried that the development might happen a little bit later and if that happens, then I think that this western gyre is going to dominate. And if it takes a little bit longer, like if it doesn't form till November 4th or 5th, then you get that neutrally tilted trough upstream over the southern plains. And that could pull it up on a more due northerly track. And then you could have impacts near central and southern Florida. If this eastern gyre intensifies and that leads to a tropical cyclone, then this thing could head up toward Jamaica, eastern Cuba, eastern Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, but that would also take it out to sea. The latest operational GFS has impacts in Hispaniola. Uh, you still can see some of these western members though. One good news is that with the latest ensembles, I don't see any that are in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, even though there are a couple that head up towards southern Florida, but looking at the upper level pattern this late season, when you get a development of a tropical cyclone out of the Central American gyre pattern, it can easily be dug out by an, an up, upstream trough. But it looks like the latest GFS is dominating that eastern gyre. You can see kind of the darker colors over here near Jamaica. We do have this one member in the eastern Gulf of Mexico up there. But around November 6th, you have a couple members over South Florida. But really, you see a lot of divergence in the track as you get, uh, and, and intensity, and whether it forms or not, as you get uh, this far out in the model toward November 6. But one thing that is for uh, certain is the models are definitely coming into agreement that near the first of the month, there could easily be formation of a tropical cyclone down off that Central American gyre pattern. And there is a chance that it could head a little bit further west. And uh, to, in order to diagnose that the best, we are going to be looking at the upper level pattern. We are up, let's go up to about 300 millibars so that we can see the shape of the upper level pattern. That's the European model. We'll head back to the GFS. This is the next system that could lead to severe weather. And it's a bit of a positively tilted trough. A lot of the flow of this lead one is on the eastern edge. And usually that means a little bit less favorable severe weather. If you have a lot of that flow organized on the back side of the trough, that means it's amplifying getting that neutral, if not a negative tilt, as it ejects from the mountains and across the plains. But this time of year during the late season, late October, especially into November, these positively tilted troughs are associated with large-scale low-level jets because of the upstream high pressure that happens. You'll get a squeeze play between those, and that usually can lead to a lot of low-level flow. And look at that low-level jet. This is at 850 millibars, so we're looking a kilometer above the ground, a little bit closer to the ground. You can see that large scale low level jet. Those are southerly winds ripping above the ground about a kilometer or two above the ground. You have your high pressure off to the east, trough in the west. The squeeze play creates those accelerated southerlies just above the ground. And that low level jet plays a huge role in transporting moisture northward from the Gulf of Mexico. It also plays a huge role in the development of low level shear across the warm sector. 
So that's why this area gets more tornadoes than anywhere in the world because of the evolution of that low level jet. The wind about a kilometer above the ground that just really rips. Of course, the, uh, the uh, pre prevalence of severe weather will be dependent on the moisture return that happens up there. And if there's going to be enough moisture. And boy, it looks like we have a nice ribbon of 60 plus dew points there in blue coming up from the western Gulf of Mexico. There's a lot of dryness, though, still dominating the eastern U.S., including Dixie Alley, where drought conditions are prevalent. But along the western edge of that high, you get a nice ribbon of moisture that comes up. This is Tuesday evening. Wednesday, I think that moisture will be a little bit more prevalent, but the trough will probably be ejecting to the east by that time. But you can see a little bit more moisture on Wednesday, 65 plus even down here into Oklahoma. So that is some pretty good moisture that's coming in on that high pressure. Looks like the Gulf of Mexico at least is open for business, 70 plus dew points there. A lot of dry air though here to the north of that possibly forming hurricane and that would probably take it out a little bit further east maybe even way out east here closer to Hispaniola eastern Cuba up there that is probably going to be the area that really needs to watch this potential hurricane but if it takes a long time to develop then there is a chance that that more neutrally tilted trough that develops by about November 3rd and 4th that could pull a tropical cyclone out of the Caribbean and into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. But the models have backed off of that scenario a little bit. Thank goodness. But let me show you what that upstream trough looks like. So this one could lead to prolonged severe weather across the central and eastern U.S. But these upstream are going to be higher amplitude troughs. You've got that one over the, Aleutia, or, uh, over the Gulf of Alaska coming out. You've got another one upstream. See this waviness and an active energized jet stream over the northern Pacific. That's going to lead to the uptick in severe weather that's coming into the first part of November. Look at all that strong southwesterly flow out there. And boy, look at the, those northerlies coming out of the Pacific Northwest. This right here, those are big northerlies. A lot of flow on the backside of a trough that's organizing across the western U.S. A lot of southwesterly winds over the central and southern plains. A little bit of a subtropical connection even. This is going to be setting the stage for a very active first part of November. And if that tropical system waits out of the Caribbean for this trough that comes in with a more neutral, even a negative tilt, that could try to pull it a little bit further west into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. But the main models develop it a little bit earlier, and this lead trough in those southwesterly seem to take it out toward Hispaniola, Jamaica, eastern Cuba, Turks and Caicos area. So it looks like that's the most likely scenario now. But if it does take a long time, these uh, late season troughs like this are pretty effective at digging out a tropical cyclone out of the Western Caribbean. And look at that trough coming in November 3rd and 4th. It's got a nice bowling ball on the southern edge of it, an area of cold air right here. That is a bowling ball trough, and that's going to likely slam into the southern plains like November 4th, 5th, and 6th and lead to multiple days of severe weather. More importantly, though, I think that's going to lead to much needed rainfall down here across the southern plains. So I'm live right now from Team Dominator headquarters in Oklahoma. Very dry out here, drought conditions last night, beautiful night happening. The good news is that this pattern with that closed low and a lot of isentropic lift out ahead of it, a lot of warm advection, a lot of precipitation, that's going to lead to an abundance of precip here, much needed precip across the southern plains. Thank you, Team Dominator members, for everything. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I'm glad to be doing these live briefings again at, at Football Saturday. Uh-oh. It looks like I did another stream for everybody, unfortunately, here. So this was supposed to be for a member-only stream. And it looks like it might have made it to everybody. So... Thank you, Team Dominator members, for tuning in. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I probably needed to do this live stream for everybody anyway just to talk about the severe weather. I know that the algorithm's not favoring big severe weather right now, so it doesn't make as much sense for me to go live. But you got this bulbous trough down here. I think we're going to see an uptick in severe weather across the central and southern plains. And I do think that that tropical system will probably go east. But if it takes its time and forms, 
and you get this negatively tilted trough right here. This looks like big severe weather at least into early November. Southern Plains, big severe weather. Look at the low level jet that comes out of the shape of that trough happening. So there's a decent low level jet. This is Tuesday. This is a long way out as well. But you can tell that negatively tilted trough just leads to big time low level jet action here across the Southern Plains, Kansas, Oklahoma to Northwest Texas. Those are big winds, 40 to 50 knots. That's gonna be Tuesday evening. That's like November 5th and 6th. I think that's election day as well, but we had a big severe weather event in November. I think that was 2017, maybe 2018 in the Texas Panhandle. A lot of visible storms out there. I think that was actually 2015 in November, which is a pretty active year for the Southern Plains. Spring 2015 and the fall season of 2015, especially because of that one event. But this looks like a big Southern Plains low-level jet type of a trough. You've got a big negatively tilted trough coming into that. Look at that compact wave there, folks. This is the GFS model. We're way out in la-la land out here. A lot of the suits, the meteorologists, especially those with certificates, don't like it when you're out this far out. But look at that low coming in here. Southeastern Colorado, western Oklahoma Panhandle, 500 millibars. Big jet streak coming out here. A lot of low-level shear, too, because of a strong low-level jet that develops out of a trough shape like that. You've got like 60 knots there out of the due south across Oklahoma, a surging dry line as well. So to me, this looks like a very active second season for severe weather. And I've got a speaking event coming up at Westmoreland, Kansas, too, that area that had that sideways tornado, caused an EF3 tornado there. I also have that coming up. But I, I do think that the first half of November is going to be quite active. Each system has better moisture, too. It's very likely that this next week system is going to be a little bit meager in terms of its moisture. This is going to be this Tuesday, so in a couple of days. And usually when you have a low-level jet that amplifies further north and isn't building in from the south across the southern plains, it means that you're dealing with an upper-level trough that doesn't really have a very favorable shape. But usually near the magic hour, like 7 or 8 p.m., you can get that low-level jet that will intensify. If you have supercell storms, then uh, those will respond to that low-level shear, start producing tornadoes. That's why the magic hour gets so many tornadoes. But then you look at the moisture on the GFS, and it's quite meager, barely 60. So you're going to have kind of a diffuse dry line out here. In fact, probably more of a southwest to northeast-oriented dry line because of that positively tilted trough. A lot of the upper level flow concentrated on the east side of that trough. Let's see what the cape looks like with that 60 dew point there. Non-existent. So Tuesday into Wednesday, maybe you develop some surface base instability on Wednesday here in central Oklahoma. But this initial trough is going to be a little bit dry compared to the ones back behind it. There's a lot of dry conditions across the eastern U.S. And a lot of that is due to this trough shape. So see how this trough has hardly any flow on the backside and all of the strong southwesterly flow is on the east side of the trough. That means it's basically a dying trough. It's not amplifying anymore. It is shearing out over this anticyclone over the southeastern U.S. And that leads to a wispy trough shape, a positively tilted trough like that. You don't get much in the, uh, as much low-level shear usually with a trough like this. You usually get your upper-level winds that are parallel to a southwest to northeast-oriented front. So you could easily get a, a squall line, kind of a skinny squall line from the upper Midwest all the way down to a surface low in the southern plains. And then you'll have kind of a southwest to northeast-oriented dry line, decent moisture, but you just don't get as much of the moisture return when you get that neutral, if not a negatively tilted trough. But that's coming upstream here, folks. That next trough coming up over the North Pacific could be quite interesting. The 12Z GFS has an unfavorable trough shape this week as well. See how all the flow is over the eastern side of that trough? Not as much flow on the back side, a little bit more meager on the back side of the trough. And instead, this high pressure area to the southeast of that trough is dominating. The trough just shears out over top of that. It's also these dry northeasterlies here that are probably going to prevent that tropical cyclone from lifting up into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. 
But the next trough behind it, this one right here, has my eye for early November. I think that one's going to possibly go big for severe weather. Uh, this is supposed to be a member-only stream. I'm going to be doing a lot more of those this off-season, educational-type streams, where we kind of break down the forecast process. It's this trough into early November that has a lot more flow on its backside. It's going to continue to amplify. And it's this trough that I think is going to have more favorable moisture and a more favorable trough shape for big severe weather. And look at that thing. Look at that just barrel down into the southwestern U.S., big vort max. That's why I think there's going to be a lot of snow across the mountain west from California through Colorado. You're going to have a lot of these storm systems coming out here. And it's kind of telegraphing an active tornado season in 2025 again. I see a lot of similarities between the winter of 2010 into 2011 with this one. So this is the trough I was worried about as you're going into like November 4th and 5th, that if there is a tropical cyclone down forming in the Western Caribbean, a trough with a more neutral tilt like that might be able to pull that thing into the Eastern Gulf of Mexico, but only if it takes a long time to form, if it forms, but this would be more of, a concern for, more of a concern for severe weather across the southern plains of this trough shape. You've got a bowling ball there on the southern edge of the trough, a bowling ball of cold air, a ton of flow on the backside of the trough. That yields a more neutrally tilted trough upon ejection. And like November 3rd and 4th, I think that this would lead to more favorable severe weather and more importantly, more rainfall here too across the southern plains. So... We are, have much needed rainfall here at Team Dominator headquarters. We are going to be building new Dominators. We're going to be launching rockets again coming next year, flying drones. We are going all in on our field science up in 2025. So get ready for that. And all of that is thanks to you, Team Dominator members, that make these updates possible, these educational briefings. You've got a neutrally tilted trough trying to get that negative tilt. Looks like the long-range GFS is trying to show... A bit of a dirty trough ejection with this Fort Max dominating. Probably have a surface low up there, Colorado low with a dry line coming south of it. Storm motion might be a little bit too meridional for that, but this is a more favorable trough. And upstream, there are more troughs coming in during early November. So I think that it's even going to be more active. Look at that. That could be Dixie Alley, folks. A return to Dixie Alley into early November election day ripper of a severe weather event coming into the central u.s potentially there thanks everybody for tuning in field science yes that's what we focus on here at team dominator thank you angie good to see angie on here thanks team dominator members so that's what we're looking at folks here Watching that Central American gyre pattern, I would say that the threat for Florida is subsiding, trending down a little bit, but it all depends on which one of those areas of spin dominates. The one further east, the one a little bit closer to Nicaragua, if that one dominates, it could pull that hurricane into the eastern Gulf of Mexico, especially if it takes a little bit longer and gets in the warm side of that more neutrally tilted trough, that second trough. I think that also could lead to more significant severe weather. This upcoming week, I think, is going to have a little less severe weather because of that unfavorable trough shape. A lot of that flow is on the eastern edge of the trough, not as much in the backside of the trough. But thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this live emergency weather report. Thank you, Team Dominator members, for which uh, these weather reports are intended. And I hope that everybody has a great Saturday. Boomer sooner. Hopefully we beat Ole Miss.